as part of an introduction to, to a lot of the RTS programs and courses that we've got, um, we talk a little bit about education and some of the barriers to education. A lot of that comes from our attachments and our kind of ego-based stuff. And, and, and sometimes we don't even know we're doing it. Here's something I like to talk about, and uh, it's going to hit home with a lot of people, and it might hit home, uh, it might hit an emotional kind of a nerve thing, but just hear me out if you don't mind, and just consider, just consider some of these things, especially as you're starting to throw bricks at the television or the, the computer monitor right now. I want to talk about teams, because it seems like people, um, People that are trying to learn something, well, we, I think it's humans. Maybe it's humans in this country, you know, because there's World Cup soccer. Dude, dude, we're all about teams. We are not good at being alone. We're not good at having independent thought. We're not good at leading, and I don't mean leading a group, I mean leading ourselves. We love to be followers, and we love to follow teams. And sports are the great, best example of teams. So education becomes about teams, too. So. What do we do? We kind of have belief teams in education. I, I, I believe what these guys believe. I, I believe tr they have the truth. Now think about this. A lot of what we're doing with our teams is we believe that team sound bites. We've learned that team sound bites. We've been indoctrinated to that team sound bites and we can repeat that team sound bites. So that means we're good at being on that team. And we rarely shift from something we're good at to something a little less comfortable that might actually be an important evolution for us inside. More of a growing up process. But think about this. There's nothing wrong with teams. That's how we have basketball, whatever. It's kind of the pathology of the team that I'm talking about and the attitude of it. So the team sound bites, what do I mean by that? Well, um, posture is important. Yes, absolutely. And you know what I notice? See, when we're listening to a teacher from the, the head of the team, one of the leaders of the team, um, often the way we get involved in this team is we, we like the charisma of that individual. And if we like their, if they're very charismatic presenters and we like them, then we assume everything they say is true. Conversely, if you don't like the presenter, regardless of charisma, they kind of rub you the wrong way, maybe because they're saying something a little bit different, maybe totally different than what you already thought, um, then the information must be false. And it's funny how we don't actually think about the information. We think about the deliverer. And that's an important distinction to make if we're really going to objectively try to improve and really become good learners, good students. Do you ever think about the word fan? One time I said, I, I saw somewhere, an article said, be a fan, don't be a fanatic. And I would love to have talked to that author of that article because I said, dude, <laughs> fan is short for fanatic. They're the same thing. Now, I know there's all different versions of fans. Some of them end up in jail. Some of them for killing somebody. <laughs> some some um, just kind of sort of, it's something they kind of like, this team, that sport. So I know there's, there's a broad spectrum or continuum of fans. But there's some interesting things there. Fan, fanship becomes like a culture. It becomes like this division, this us against you thing. Rather than, hey, we're both football players, we're both football fans, why do we hate each other? Because you like that shirt and I like this shirt. In fact, I like the shirt so much that if this player I currently love changes to your shirt, I hate that guy. They're really just the shirt I like. Now, if you think that's funny, I have to admit I stole that from Seinfeld, but you're probably too young to remember Seinfeld, so I shouldn't have told you that. Anyway, we have these tremendous emotional responses. Somehow we become to think the team is us. We become to think information, or more importantly, more appropriately, sound bites are our, our identity. Um, and we should be able to talk about these things without feeling any emotional response because what's, what's stored in our minds as information or misinformation is not you and it's not me, it's not us. But we wrap those things up together so tightly. The bottom line is what we deal with so much in the educational world, especially in the fitness industry, are followers, not real students. They are not real students. They're not, it's, not, it's not real learning the way we're taught. Um, we're following gurus. We're following team colors only in our world. They're quasi-experts with charisma. That's the guru. Um, our team colors are our certifications on the wall, our degrees on the wall. We don't feel the need to support any of the details behind them. 
it in and of itself and the name makes us feel like it's right. And the, by proxy, we are too. So it's just something I'd like for you to think about. Um, someone described it to me this way one time. Relative to education in this industry, if you went or you were going to buy a car, you were going to buy a whatever, a, a Nissan. And you go to the Nissan car lot and you're like, yeah, you know what, I, I just don't, um, I don't like this kind of car. I don't like any of the things Nissan has to offer. So you get in the car and you're driving down the street and I'm going to go, I'm going to go look at other cars. And you pull into the next Nissan car lot and you get out and you're like, you start looking at those cars. Now you're going like, that's the dumbest analogy, analogy I ever heard, but I wasn't sure I got it in the beginning either, but, but here's what, how he described it. He said, you know, um, what we do in this industry is we go, oh, I go, people say this, I go to education all the time. I, I learn from so many different presenters. But they're all saying the same thing so many times. We go to things in order to get what we have in our head confirmed, not to have it challenged. And education requires challenge. Education requires opening our minds and closing our mouths. And it's really tough for us to do when we have to be right all the time. And so it's just something I'd like for you to think about. If you're going and the version of education you're involved in is choreography, you yourself are taking this thing and you're out there doing this group exercise thing to learn the steps. If you go to something to learn how to perform a bench press and it's choreographed and you're following that, that's not, in my opinion, real education. Real education, or at least maybe I should say advanced, later down the road education for someone who really thinks they're advanced, is not about an advanced workout. It's about advanced understanding. Getting beyond the sound bites and getting beyond the superficial flat earth view of things. What's underneath there? What's inside? Because when I know that, and how that varies from individual to individual, I can truly customize, I can modify these things, and that is the kind of education that becomes important. And that, that only, only happens when we step out from being a follower. I don't know, following learning protocols, it's, it's the place to start. It's where we all start. It's kind of like the little kid who says, uh, the mom says, hold my hand while we cross the street. And that's important for them. And they kind of learn the protocol of crossing street is this, right? At some point, mom goes, now look both ways but she's still holding their hand, you know? So the protocol is becoming a learning situation to start thinking. At some point in time, this kid has to let go of the hand. Mostly wants to let go of the hand because they're a big kid now, but they gotta learn to look both ways. Adults, we don't even remember doing that. We just start being the one reaching down for the hand, creating the protocol again. I, I don't see in this industry where we actually stop holding our parents hand much because we're still doing protocols we're still following a guru we're still repeating their sound bites and getting mad when somebody has a different sound bite get rid of the sound bites support things with fact question the fact and see if it's really a sound bite because your fact is a sound bite if you don't see where it falls apart with some individuals consider that one of the things I started really noticing was you don't really learn how to be a masterful trainer, exercise professional, until you have clients that can't do a single thing you have to offer them. They can't do or tolerate a single thing your protocol has to offer. And, and especially your canned assessments. The thing you're supposed to do to figure out where they are, they can't even do that physically. Well, that's when you learn how to figure things out. You've got a choice. Either you get rid of those clients and send them to somebody else who's learning how to figure stuff out, or you step up yourself and, and grow up and stop waiting for someone to hold your hand across the street. You know, there was something I was going to say, and I got so wrapped up in my talking to you thing about the fans and all that stuff, and where I wish we could go as, as an industry and, and certainly as individuals, because that's how we change an industry. But this picture I didn't really look at, and I'd say it's mostly angry fans, and you can find it all, find pictures like that all over the internet. And they're really mad at somebody that probably has kids and is probably a good dad or good wife and probably helped their father or mother by going and sitting in the hospital with them during their last year of dealing with cancer. And they're like flipping them off because they're wearing the wrong shirt. 
ultimately they're responsible for themselves. I think the thing that we don't recognize, they don't recognize, that we don't recognize as teachers, um, teachers that are teaching fandom, teachers that are looking for followers in order to have a source of income, because uh, followers equal money. Uh, it's hard to look for real students, they're few and far between. And they question you and they challenge you as a teacher. But the problem with this idea is the way it gets transferred, the way sound bites get transferred, they just get passed on from generation to generation. In our industry, with about a six month attrition rate for the average trainer, this stuff gets just passed on to generation and generation and generation. And really, I'd like for you to consider that this, and this picture, some people think it's funny, I think it's sad, there's what we're creating. That little kid doesn't know why he hates that other team, but he's learning hate, and he's learning team colors, and he learned communication, nonverbal communication. Well, it looks like a little verbal and nonverbal. And thank God he's got his face half painted because that's what mature grown up adults do. And this is the way we act in the middle of conflict in a sport that doesn't matter.